All right, traders, uh, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Daily Roundup webinar. If you just saw a, a tweet that I I retweeted, or Scottsdale Police Department, I just retweeted. Uh, you know, in, in my own neighborhood, just, just uh, a couple miles down the road, uh, this really famous YouTuber, uh, everything with what's wrong with America, and I, you could even say the world today, he organized a bunch of rioters and came to our town and broke things, stole from our most high-end restu uh, restaurants and terrorized. And he, he vlogged himself. He put it on video and, and, and he, you could see him right there. And he's hopefully going to get prosecuted. So I'm really happy about that because he really brought terror to my hometown. And it's just, it's, it's everything that is wrong with this world right now. So anyway, I'm, and I just found that out just moments ago. So, um, uh, and, and so if I sound a little riled up, that's the reason why. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I am a little riled up because of the markets. Look at, let's look at the, uh, market really quick and look at where the euro's at. I, I mean, the euro has really surpassed what I thought it was going to do. I was actually targeting 113. I closed it out early because I thought we'd get a pullback pre ECB and, you know, the euro continues to blast higher. I mean, it is really extending gains and, and it looks like we're going to, we're going to trade at least to 114. These are big moves guys. And, um, you know, uh, you, you could, you could ask the question, you know, are, is it, is it done yet? And you know, I, I don't know, but we're, you can see why we're stopping, you know, we're challenging some trend lines here and, you know, this might be a near term stall point for, for the Euro dollar, but I, I, I'm not in the I'm not in the camp of wanting to short it. Matter of fact, what I'd be looking to do right now is be buying some of the euro crosses. Um, I, I, I fortunately I paid I played a little bit of Euro New Zealand on the long side uh, earlier today. I am out of it right now. I got out around these levels a couple hours ago. But as you can see, I'm, I'm watching it because if it breaks back above 176 right here, then we have a false breakdown. Oh my God, there goes stocks. What the hell just happened? Um, uh, hold on really quick guys. You guys watching equities here? Hello? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if there's news or not. It's just selling off aggressively. Sorry. I was talking to the guys in my office guys while we're broadcasting right now. Um, <laughs> I just want to, yeah, me neither. Um, I just, you know, just, all right, I just want to make sure you guys were seeing it. Sorry, guys, you can probably hear me talking to the office. Uh, it just happened to, you know, all happened while um, this webinar is going on. Anyway, so what I was saying is the, uh, here, let me turn the volume down here. Um, you know, because, you know, we all, we're all trading from home right now. So it's like, you know, uh, sometimes people step away from their computers and uh so i just wanted to make sure everybody was kind of had had a was looking at it anyway 76 20 um uh 76 20 that's going to be the false breakdown area of the euro new zealand i think let's make sure it breaks above this 80 first and if it starts breaking above 80 that means that this this might have just been a little stop loss move in equities but you know, something to pay attention to. Now, let me show you this uh, chart. I think this is really important. And it, it matters because, to me because of what I'm trading right now. But uh, look at the Aussie. Okay, you know, obviously we're up against a lot of resistance. But today, you know, we hit a new trend high and reversed. And so that's going to, you know, it's going to weigh heavily on the Aussie longs right now because they're, they're, they're sitting there going, oh, crap, we couldn't hold on to new highs. So, I think what we have to pay attention to is if the Aussie starts breaking back below, um, you know, this, uh, well, definitely a trend line, but 68.50, which is far away. I mean, you guys, you know, look at it, it's like 90 pips away. But if that happens, then you got to be really careful with equities here. Uh, hold on really fast. Um, uh, you guys, just give me a second. All right. But yeah, I think you got to be really, really careful with equities at this point because, you know, if, if things really start to roll over, especially after the NASDAQ hitting all-time highs, you know, you, you had on, – on what, Mike? 
Oh, let me take a look. So uh, he was just saying that the S and P's just hit the seven eight six. Yeah, pretty much to the T. I mean, yeah, and I'm looking at it as an ascending wedge too. I'll send you guys out a chart, um, maybe, so this way you can see what I'm looking at. Yeah. See these. These guys are all talking about how this is a pretty tough level in the market. And uh, just so you guys can, oh shoot. Man. You guys know that we've been following this chart, but um, the 78% retracement is pretty important here. I'm gonna, pa I'm gonna put it in the chat room. Uh, so these guys are like, yeah, you know, you can see why people are you know, starting to get a little nervous up here. They're using the terms, you know, it's a tough level, tough resistance, which I, I, I believe, you know, it is. So anyway, um, what, I, what I've been really trying to pay attention to is this, and this is not drawn correctly. I mean, let me draw it real quick. Four hour, that is my four hour? Hourly. Uh, that, see, my, draw, my drawing tool got a little messed up here. Uh, uh, uh. One thing about trading chart, uh, trading view charts, they, you know, are not perfect. I've yet to find a charting service that is perfect. But anyway, um, just, you know, if we break this lower trend line, which comes in around 3083, that's not very far from where we're at. I mean, if you, you think about that, that's only 20 S&P points, uh, 30 S&P points really, but it's not, that's not very far considering where we've gone, right? And where we've come from over the last two and a half months, we've gone from 2,200 to, I mean, that's a 900 point rally. So for us to drop 30 points in the S and P, you know, I mean, I think it's doable. So that's why I think we need to be a little careful here because if we do see, you know, if we do see, um, uh, the S and P break through this support, I think you will see currencies like the Aussie, which, you know, that Aussie showed you that false breakout, uh, you're going to see that reverse too. So uh, those are things that I think we need to keep an eye on. <clears throat> Just be be a little careful with this market here. Um, also, we were talking about it in the chat room. The U.S. dollar Mexican peso is trying to build a little bit of a base here. I, I bought it a couple of different times. Um, I made a little bit of money on it, not much, but um, but I've been playing it as it's dropped into the mid 70s. Uh, I, I don't own it right now, but I am watching it because if, if it breaks above 22, then it's going to squeeze. And um, so I think that's that's important. One of the one of the things that I'm shorting right now, and this is why that Aussie matters to me, is I shorted the Aussie Canadian. My average is about 20 pips lower than here. I almost got stopped out. I mean, I was really close to getting stopped out. But if you look at that false breakout there, not just the Aussie dollar, but the Aussie Canadian. Um, that's an hourly uh, possible dark cloud cover. So, you know, if we, if we trade back down to the sixties, like in the next hour or two, then you're going to, you might see some bearish continuation of this particular pair. So that's something that I think, um, you know, you guys should be kind of paying close attention to if you're trading like the Aussie, just look at, look at what's happening with other Aussie pairs as well. Uh, because you might be seeing a reversal, not just in the Aussie dollar, but here's the Aussie, uh, the Euro Aussie that's starting to, you know, build a little bit of a base. So, you know, if the Aussie comes under pressure, it could really, really come under pressure at this, at this stage in the game. Um, what else did I wanted to talk about? Oh, you know, I think we should just look at the NASDAQ 100. I mean, it's, it's pretty unreal. I have to admit the NASDAQ 100 hit a all time all time high and you know we had an all time closing high i think yesterday i mean that's pretty pretty amazing now i know what you're thinking as you're looking at this chart you're like well blake there's a double top look it's not a double top until you start breaking through some supports uh first of all a real double top is something like this you break through 6300 and then you know a real double top is something like this which i couldn't imagine happening but hell we live in a crazy world right now right so, um, you know, could the NASDAQ go to 3000? Oh my God, it would be, that would be a wild move. 
like wild move. I don't think that that's possible, but what I would be thinking is right now is, uh, let me, let me change up these charts really quick. This is, um, this is pretty significant resistance. So if you are shorting the NASDAQ, then your stops are probably above the highs, right? I, I don't think you should risk more than those highs. And I think that's a good risk reward, even if you're just targeting down here at support, channel support, which comes down at 91.60. I mean, look, you're risking, what, 100 plus points to make, let's say, 95, 500 points. It's a one to five risk reward ratio. That's good, right? One of the other things uh, I want to leave you with, and then um, uh, and I, I got a couple of questions, but let me let me just um, let me just talk about this really quick. Just because uh, I was talking about it in the chat room, if you missed it, we're coming we're coming into election season, and um, and Donald Trump is losing support by military. Uh, obviously, Repub uh, Democrat support. There is no Democrat support, but re Republican support. And um, this could gain momentum um, because, you know, he didn't create the coronavirus. He didn't create the George Floyd situation. But his responses and his actions matter. And what's happening is you're seeing a very de decisive turn in sentiment against Trump and how he's handling the situation, which um, that is important because how's that going to play into the election? And if a Democrat like Biden or somebody else comes into, you know, takes office, that's going to be, generally speaking, pretty big negative inequities. Now, it'd be one thing if it was like a Mark Cuban, you know, and you go, he, Mark Cuban ran as a Democrat, and you're like, man, well, you know, he's, he's pro-business, you know, it, it, we wouldn't have that big of a sell-off. But I think with a, a Biden, the risk is high. And then, you know, you think about that with these lofty levels, uh, you got to start thinking five months, it's still a long time away, but it's not that far. It really isn't. And a lot can happen, as Chi pointed out in our chat room, but it's, you know, sentiment starts to turn and plus you got all these, you know, headwinds that we're facing, civil unrest and COVID-19 and possibly second wave. I'm, I mean, I'm sitting in the, the epicenter right now of, of, of a state that no one really cares about COVID-19. We happen to be, I think, number one or top three highest percent in new cases over the last couple of days, the state that I live in, that's because no one cares. Everybody's like, oh, COVID-19 is over. But you know it's not over. It's not like there was a vaccine. People around here act like it never even existed. So if you look at like um, things like this, let me see if I can pull it up for you guys. Uh, if you look like this, you know, this is the death rate in the United States via the Financial Times. You know, we might be at 941, but we were at 800 just earlier this week. You think about that. That's a pretty big move, and I, I don't think it's going to improve. Is what I'm trying to say. The point I'm trying to make, and this is via the FT guys. The, there's a virus tracker. I keep it up all the time. Um, I, I'm just, I'm just saying that I, I, I don't see that improving. I think it's going to get worse because no one cares. No one's taking precautions around here. Okay. So with all that, you just have to be really careful with risk appetite. And, and, and I want to point out again, uh, us dollar Mexican peso gets above 22. And I think we need to all start being very careful. Okay. A uh, couple questions really quick. Johan says, uh, Florida rose in COVID. Yeah, Florida is Florida, Arizona. I think there's a couple other states that are, you know, percentage wise are really ugly. Uh, Jane says, Polly was expecting a pullback. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think he, he's, well, Polly's Polly. Polly's awesome. And never doubt Polly. We all get things wrong from time to time, but man, he's stellar good. And that's why he's, uh, that's why he's on our team. That's why. That's, uh, I love the guy. Anyway, um, uh, Takis, 
he put me a chart, but I can't pull it up right here. Tiana says, damn, Kiwi won't die. I know. Kiwi won't yet, 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 yet. Uh, Su Yong asks, what's happening with gold? Well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say this, that, uh, I think gold was good it was breaking down. And then today, you know, we reversed hard. I think this is kind of a, this is kind of a sign that you, you just can't be short gold. And I think this is the line, the trend line that we have to pay attention to the green one, not so much the red one. So we should get rid of that. And now say from this point, as long as gold is above 1687, that's this support level here, the 618, there's no reason to be on the short side of gold because it looks like it's, and, and gold's always been one of those that I'm very, very nervous about trying to be on the short side of because in this day and age with, well, and then one of the other things uh, I, I guess I have to imagine uh, or I have to mention is that the uh, Congress is thinking about unleashing another trillion, trillion with a T dollars in stimulus. You keep throwing more money at, at the market and it's only going to increase the value of, uh, um, of, you know, gold. It just is, you know, people are going to look at it as an inflation hedge, even though I don't think we have an inflation inflation problem, but it's gold is one of those assets where there's limited amounts of it. So gold and silver are going to continue to outperform. Uh, Suyog also asked, what's the price of, of gas in our region? Well, for us, it's about, for where I live, it's about, Two thirty a gallon, two dollars and thirty cents U.S. dollars. If you're in like Los Angeles or in California, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than that. It's probably going to be closer to, or New York, probably closer to like three twenty-five. And if you're in Middle America, it's probably going to be less than two dollars. So it just depends where you're at. All right, guys and gals. Hey, listen. If you are watching this late uh, as a recording, that only means that you're not a Forex Analytics subscriber. So make sure you subscribe. It's only $1 for 10 days. For those of you that are listening in, thank you so much for your support. Uh, I will not be here tomorrow because tomorrow is Friday. Thank God. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow on the face webinar. I just won't, we will just, we just won't have one of these. Have a great one, everybody. And um, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks.